got their All right, folks, we're back over at Pat's this week. Now, we have not gotten everything finished up that we need to. And the reason for that is simple. Pat, you know, he has a real job. <laughs> this is not his primary gig. And we can't get over here right now because we are in the middle of our move from our current location over to our new location on the other side of town. So we are cataclysmically busy right now. But there is something that did come up. We needed an MSD box, so we figured that this would be a good week to talk about MSDs and what you should do with them, where you should mount them, and how you should kind of button everything up and tie it up. So this is gonna be a short little video on that this week. And then hopefully in the next couple of weeks after we get everything worked out on some of the other stuff that's going on underneath the car, uh, we'll be able to come back and do a first start on this engine after it's not run for a while. So just bear with us on this car. It's fighting us all the way. It's been idle for a while and it's old like me. And when I sit in a chair or whatever, I tend to not want to do anything. I just kind of want to sit around. So this is a lot more comfortable than working on a car. Feeling like I'm at a car show. <laughs> waiting for somebody, somebody to pull through our shots like normal. <laughs> we, need a, we need a show zombie to walk through right about now. Um, so we've even encountered another problem. More problems. <laughs> we were hoping to at least, at least be able to get this thing to bark today. That was going to be the surprise yeah, at the end of the video. Yeah, make a little bit of noise, but on further inspection, this needs to be returned <laughs> because it somebody, is Somebody did dodgy <laughs> stuff. Uh, so, correction, this needs to be returned maybe a second time. <laughs> we think. Yeah, there is a bent pin and also... More than one. Yeah, there are several bent pins. Two of them are pushed back. Well, no, three pins are pushed back in, uh, and one of them has actually damaged the plastic. It's got so much force put on it. So this is maybe been a return or this is factory damage <laughs> yeah i think bobby returned that yeah <laughs> he'd been drinking when he and jojo were out there working <laughs> on the car one and day. it got put back on the shelf so <laughs> he tried to he tried to <laughs> yeah. stab it in there yeah, and it that old work. camel hump head 350 fired up <laughs> <laughs> smoking in marlboro <laughs> yeah. drinking a bud light <laughs> bush light <laughs> <laughs> so it, we already have a problem yeah. because this thing is not she's a uh, kaput it's not happy yeah and so we can't do anything with it today so we've, we're gonna punt even again on top of the punt <laughs> i mean right now we're at our goal line facing the la raiders yeah. back when they were like we're hoping for a hundred yard interception <laughs> the immaculate <laughs> what is it, the immaculate conception yeah. oh, <laughs> i don't know football that much sorry i'm not a football guy i'm a, I'm a car same, guy same Kind of like maybe Grumpy Jenkins on the line. There you go, because Grumpy was a he was a badass. He was good. <laughs> anyway, so um, what we're going to talk about today is things with the MSD box, because I think a lot of times MSDs probably get a bad rap from people. And I know we're going to yeah. get people right in the comments. Right in the comments, let me know about your experience with MSD, because I think sometimes MSD gets a bad rap because people will mount it in places that I think it's bad juju to mount it. Yeah. And that's one of the things we're going to talk about here in a second. But I think sometimes parts get a bad rap because people don't do the right things. People don't do the right, right things with the parts. Yes. So I think there is some validity to it, but it's kind of in a different way because you'll see that like NASCAR used to run the MSCs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they still do because I don't, again, I don't pay attention to NASCAR either. Yeah. They used to run redundant boxes, but you're talking about an environment that is it, designed, well, not designed, but it kills everything that's in it. Yeah, like, I mean, you're you're really testing that, everything that to the, the limits. Yeah, that is the proving ground is NASCAR. I mean, that's why, you know, NASCAR finally, a lot of the teams, almost all the teams, I think every team now runs a Ford 9-inch. Yeah. Because the 9-inch is, just, it just, just was works. bulletproof. Just were, the guys we were running the 9-inch, it worked. So everybody else started going, look what Zog do. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, yeah, everybody it, starts running a nine inch because it works for everybody. The nine inch is now the performance standard for yeah. aftermarket. Really. I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. And so with the MSD thing, you're talking about a component that is, is a, it, it's a potted component. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a motherboard. Yeah. There's a of, motherboard in here. There's capacitors, there's diodes, everything. This is a whole computer in a box. So if you mount this in a heat zone, in a vibration zone, you're putting all that stress into a silicone chip. And that's the thing too, yeah. from my point of view, is you, you're doing that, and then you've got a situation where on a NASCAR team, even if they're mounted inside the chassis, everything is set up to make that chassis tight enough yep. to run around that track. Yep. And when you're doing that, you're inducing a massive vibration, massive amount of vibration in yep. that car. 
and also even inside the cabs, massive heat. Oh yeah, because yeah. those guys are wearing, they have to wear cool suits yeah. in the summertime yeah. when they're running. So yep. you know there's a ton of heat inside mm -hmm. that cab. But even on regular cars like this one, with, not regular car, this is just a drag car. But if this was mounted on the firewall above the headers, this would probably see maybe 200 degrees of engine bay temp. And if you're hitting that where you're you're doing a heating and cooling cycle. Yeah, on. again and again, the motherboard's expanding, the solder joints are expanding, contracting, and eventually they crack. Because I mean, I think that's one of the things, if you look at, let's look at it from a, a, an aspect of a modern car. Mm -hmm. Almost every one of the modern cars you see, if they have a fuse box inside the engine bay, because they do now, they yep. have to do that because there's mm -hmm. so many fuses. Yeah. Um, they're almost always encased yep. inside of a plastic box on the edge of the fender, yep. usually. Very far away, or even in the cowl. I've seen many uh, manufacturers are going to installing them in the cowl, not even in the engine bay anymore. So, you know, when you take an MSD and you mount it, like you said, on the firewall, you're creating an issue. You really should mount that thing as close to the distributor as you can get it on the inside firewall. Now that can be a real problem mm -hmm. if you're doing a car that has factory AC on it, you're going to run into problems of... Just fitment inside. Fitment. Yeah. I mean, you know, even our F100, when we put the AC in there and we did all this other stuff... Yeah, there's no space. There's and, no space And you underneath. don't want to, even though this is enclosed and it looks like it doesn't make heat, you do not want to get this close to other things. This needs airspace around it right. to actually cool. Like that, these fins are for cooling. Yeah, that's not for yeah. pretty. That's there to, no, there's a heat sink, yes, basically. Yes. So bottom line on it with an MSD box, if you're going to put one on there, you really want to have that MSD box, in my opinion, mounted inside the cab. And Mount you're going to want to use, get the isolator kit. Yes. Because it's also going to be a good case where you're going to be able to get... You're it going to, kills a lot of the vibration that will, would be absorbed by the motherboard because yep. the vibration from this actually goes into the box and then gets absorbed by the computer chips in here. Right. Uh, this cuts probably more than 90% out of it. Yes. Yeah, so much longer lifetime. And that's what you're wanting. I mean, you're trying to buy time with this because yeah. the MSD box is not a cheap one. Now, we got, um, when he ordered it, he ordered the 6A, and then we'll go mm -hmm. into that a little bit here now, I guess. The 6A is just a straight-up box. You mm -hmm. don't have anything other than the electronic stuff inside the multi-strike setups and all that it has in it. Yeah. And then the AL is has a built-in rev limiter that you can set. So it's got two little dials here that you can tune into exactly what you want the rev limiter to be. And that's uh, that's nice. I mean, I know some of the aftermarket kits like the Protronics yep. 3 yep. has a built-in rev limiter on the actual unit itself. Yep. But I also see that with the MSD box, a lot of guys will put the MSD on a Protronics. With a Protronics. Yep. Or with a DuraSpark or with the Mopar ignition or even mm -hmm. a GMHEI. Because yep. this offers you a lot more modular setup. If you're going for a race car, uh, MSD is nice because you can get a nitrous retard box to in complement to this. So when you hit nitrous, it retards timing. Uh, they have boost controller, not boost. This one's even got a thing where you can, uh, on startup too, where you can do a uh, uh, you, timing retard with I it. I believe the AL uh, does timing retard on start. So I know that like DuraSpark had that too at one point. Mm -hmm. You could get a DuraSpark with timing retard where it would yeah, pull so timing back when, out of it when you started. key and start, it cut like 10 degrees out of it or something Yeah, I think like it's six. I yeah. think six degrees. Yeah. I don't know yeah. for sure, but we'll say six because I want to look like I know what he's talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about either. <laughs> <laughs> he really does though. You know what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think it's six. It may be 10. I'm sure John Milner or some of these other guys mm -hmm. I'm you're sure gonna, you're going to dogpile us and tell us we're wrong when we're wrong on stuff. We're we're running literally off the cuff today on things that we know about these products. So yes. and experience with and them. our experience with them. This engine would an MSD box is a good idea just simply because of what it is. With this setup, it's a good idea in my mind mm -hmm. because it's set for drag. Uh, Person, I couldn't tell by the yeah fender well. Let's see exactly him. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew it's a sleeper? Who? Knew? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> but for a driver, this is good. There's no doubt about it. It works perfect. As a basic box, it works perfect. But a Protronics 3 would do just as good. Or a DuraSpark yeah. or, or the HEI systems yeah. and all from, for 90% of what you're going to do mm -hmm. until you start getting into huge cams where a multi-strike ignition system is, is going needed. to... Yeah, because yep. you're running more fuel through, more yep. air through. And then also if you get into nitrous boost, uh, if you want to be able to control timing via electronics, because I believe there's a box that you can get with the MSD to hook a computer up to it, so you can 
put in a whole timing curve. Right, so you could take this thing down if you had a dyno facility that was a uh, chassis dyno where you could put the car on the rollers, the guy could run it through the passes and tie into the MSD box and be able to set the timing up exactly yeah. how he wants it. And then you're not having to mess with the mechanical advance, any weights or anything like that. You cut all that out and it's all electronic. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so it has its advantages, but there's the disadvantage of once you have that, if this goes out, you have nothing. And that is the big problem I've heard guys complain about. I mean, you know, the MSD box goes out, but I mean, it's not just MSD, though. No, it's everything electronic. I mean, electronics are... Pat's Ford truck back here mm -hmm. has a DuraSpark ignition system in it. Yep. It's a box that sits on the inner fender. Mm-hmm. Kind of like that. Yeah. And what's the same thing? I mean, what's the problem? Those always, for a long time there, especially the mm -hmm. aftermarket units on the DuraSparks, those would go out. Yeah. And when it goes out, you're done. From my experience, they would heat up and then you'd get a goo coming out of the connector. <laughs> <laughs> or like this one, you don't have yeah. pins that are yeah, that where too. they need to be. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> but, I mean, all of them can have ignition yeah, problems all, and failures because people say stuff about Petronics, but I've run Petronics for years. I've never had a problem with Petronics. Till battery voltage gets low, but that is electronic. That's going to be any yeah, of them. Yes. If you're below 12 volts on these things. Once any, you move away from points or really basic electronic ignition, volt, battery voltage while cranking becomes massive yeah. for startup issues. And that's something to talk about too is, I mean, like any of these things, and this is a little caveat on any kind of ignition problem, grounds 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 yes grounds and i'm not talking coffee grounds i'm talking about you need to have the engine block grounded to the to the frame or the body you have to have the body grounded to the frame if it's a full frame car like this everything needs to be grounded out to make sure that you've got the best possible connection you can have the way you can tell right away if you have ground issues on your engine is take a multimeter measure voltage go from the engine block to the battery ground if you measure any voltage there you need to add grounds the more electronics you add to the engine, the more load you put on the ground side. Right. Yeah. So if you only have, <laughs> if you went from AC, no AC generator, basic ancient tech, and from points to electronic ignition, but you only have a little tiny ground strap for the engine, that's not going to work very well. Yeah, because you look at the ground straps on a lot of the modern day cars, and they are pretty oh, substantial. I mean, yeah, you're they're... talking about a woven ground strap that's yeah. probably... A half inch wide. They're beefy. And they're beefy. Yeah. And so and they go from engine block to frame rail, engine block to cab, engine block to fender. Everything. And like I said, on a car like this, because these are isolated chassis, they mm -hmm. have isolators on them with bolts through them still. Yeah. But even so, you you, you still want to make a solid connection between cab, to frame, and engine. Right. And so whenever you're doing one of these, that's what you would want to do with this one. That's what we'll end up doing when we put the six AL on it, or six A back on it, and we get one that's not got bad pins. We'll make sure that we got good grounds from mm -hmm. body to chassis. And, and especially on something like this with a battery in the back. Because if you ground up here, the power still has to transfer from the chat through the chassis to the battery in the back. So really you would want probably want to bring a battery cable up to here for ground specifically. So you have a solid ground point directly to the battery. Right. Yeah. Because that can cause a lot of issues. All right, so we're gonna hammer home a little bit right now, folks. We're gonna talk about advantages, disadvantages with MSD as opposed to other things. Um, and I really don't see any major disadvantages. Well, I mean, one of the disadvantages is if, if you're going and doing a classic car, the one of the things I've always liked about the Petronics is you can hide that yes. sucker. Yeah, th I think the 67, didn't you have a Petronics hidden in it? No, the 72. Oh yeah, yeah, the Mach 1. Yeah. Story time. So I built my 72 Mach 1 to look like a stock car. It has a basically 351 Boss engine in it with a roller cam instead of a mechanical because I'm lazy and I don't want to adjust mechanical cam. Um, but I also wanted it to look just like it did from the factory. And so what I did is I took a Petronics, the under cap one, hid the wiring so it doesn't look like the wiring's there, and then even took the Petronics coil mm -hmm. and marked it up like a Motorcraft coil. Nice. Never got gigged for it. And didn't you put it through like a concourse? I did. Yeah. I put it through a concourse <laughs> gold judging and nobody caught that. You know what they actually gigged me for? Hmm. I had a tag that was on the steering wheel that said honk uh -huh. and it was a joke and I didn't know that there was a joke about it that they had actually done that to Bob Perkins. He's a good friend of mine. Bob Perkins does Mustang stuff and <laughs> the guys had told him that this was on the cars. 
wasn't. It was a GM thing. <laughs> so they gigged me for this stupid tag. <laughs> that was somebody else's joke to Yeah, it was somebody else's joke to somebody else. <laughs> and they didn't get me for the Protronics. And that's one of the reasons I like Protronics, mm -hmm. because you can hide that thing under a, under a cap and under, under yeah. I mean, I had a stock cap and everything. So, the, I mean, I think that's the case. And then when you look at the... Like the DuraSpark, mm -hmm. I think DuraSpark is basically kind of like an MSD. Yeah. I don't. I think if you're doing that, you start really need to looking at your DuraSpark and going, do I need the DuraSpark box, or should I, because of what I'm doing in the engine on this thing, mm -hmm. put an MSD on? Yeah, there? I believe the MSD can get a higher output voltage, mm -hmm. and I can't remember if DuraSpark has multi-spark or not. I don't think DuraSpark. Yeah. I don't think DuraSpark has multi-spark on it. I can't clearly remember ever reading it does. Mm -mm. So. It does have the, the start retard feature mm -hmm. on it, but I mean that's that's one thing. Yeah. And and then it still has. You're kind of going mox nix on the DuraSpark because it has the, you know, it can die and it it can die. Yeah. And then the one nice thing about a DuraSpark is it actually is more easy to get locally. That's true. You can go down the auto parts store. You can still store. get it from auto parts stores. Most pull aparts, they have something. I mean, they ran DuraSpark boxes up until the 90s on Ford trucks. Yeah. So you can easily source one. As long locally. as it's not puking out the end of it. It's yeah, okay. unless you got the goo. <laughs> if you don't have that, you're good. <laughs> so, and but with the MSD, I mean, it, you, to me, it's. You gain the modularity of this system. Yes. Because, especially if your build is something a little bit out there, not especially a driver but more of a performance oriented, I think the MSD is the way to go. Right. Yeah, because you can just add stuff to it. Well, the nice thing about the MSD box too is, is the box can actually be added to a Patronix. To a Patronix yes. or to a DuraSpark system. Yep. Or, I mean, I've heard of guys putting them on Porsches Yeah. with the stock CDI mm -hmm. type system, getting rid of all that stuff, putting the MSD on it. And some of the Porsche guys say it actually runs better. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you can put this on a majority of Hall Effect distributors, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, and most HEI distributors. Um, this is just a brain box. The distributor just tells it when to fire. I mean, you know, obviously, you know me with that, I would want to put same and same, so I would get an MSD distributor yeah, to go for, with my MSD box. Same here. I don't but like, that's just how I like to do it. Yeah, those. I don't like mismatching right. products. Um, HEI, I mean, like we said, you know, the HEI on top. Oh yeah, perfect system. Works. Works great. Yeah. But uh, it's, you know, it doesn't do some of the same things that the yeah. MSD will do. That's one of the things, this is not an ad for MSD. I mean, we've already, no. we've already done a couple of, you know, slight marks on it where we're talking about it, it dies like anything else but I mean I mean that's anything aftermarket if, yes. you, if you add aftermarket to your car you're in my mind you're automatically introducing failure I think that's one of the things a lot of guys don't really understand either in in, in all of this is that anything that's aftermarket no matter what mm -hmm. if you're buying a, a carburetor that's been rebuilt by an aftermarket company it's not that box that's made by or the carburetor made by Holly yeah it's just it's got somebody else it's working. a holly carburetor that somebody else has messed with you know one of the things I, and I'll, this is just a quick aside we're gonna we're gonna stop it right here because basically i don't think there's a whole lot more we can talk about on this and, and you know except going ad nauseum on it <laughs> parts on your new car break yeah and that's from the guys who make the car i mean you're going to have parts that are going to fail i saw a photo on uh, on facebook the other day where somebody the bearing blew up inside of the inside of the rotor mm -hmm. And they were all like, you know, oh, aftermarket parts, aftermarket parts. I'm like, everything is an aftermarket part. I've had a truck be delivered to Kenworth, had 0.5 miles on it. High pressure fuel system failed. 0.5 miles. We couldn't even claim warranty because it wasn't in service yet. We had to wait to sell the truck to claim the warranty for the work that we did three months prior. So everything fails. <laughs> Everything's going to have problems yeah. with it and failures. I mean, some things are better than others, but like, you're still I mean, going to have... Look at this. That's brand new, out of the box, freshly and ordered. As far as we know, let's just say, let's say I'm going to choose to think that it, it's yeah, Buddy or whatever his name was. I said before, and his, his friend. Yeah, I've got. Light got I've over. gotten return parts before by accident where companies just put it back in stock because it looks perfectly fine. I mean, this looks brand new. There's no scratches on it. I can't even see where a connector shell has been pushed in here. So stuff happened. You didn't get that far. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He ran out of bush. <laughs> he didn't get that far. He got like, oh, yeah, I'm done. Oh man! <laughs> Put it back in the box. Send it in. Yeah. Just tell him it don't work. It ain't the one we want. I went with a different system. <laughs> Mostly because I got to order another. <laughs> All right, folks. That's our show for this week. Sorry we don't have any more than this. This one's fighting us tooth and nail. It's just the way things go sometimes on these old cars. 
Um, do me a favor though, go out and check out our Patreon account. At the $10 a month level, you get monthly meetings with me. And right now, we're gonna be instituting in the next little bit here, uh, actual tech videos that we're going to be putting up there for you guys on Patreon only. Relax, if you watch the show, we're not taking anything away from what we do around here. We're just gonna be adding that to it because I've got a new slave, I mean a new employee, Andrew Medlin, coming to work with me, so he'll be able to take care of those videos and, and get them all ready to go and throw them out there for the Patreon guys to take a look at. Uh, and if they suck, you know, the Patreon guys are trapped there and they can't do much about it, so. That is if Andrew comes to work on time. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> subscribe to the channel. We're trying to get 100,000 viewers by the end of a year. We're not gonna say what year, but we're trying to get 100,000 viewers by the end of a year. Uh, and so that's just a goal that we have inside here. If you subscribe to the channel, click that bell for notification. If you don't click the bell, you ain't never gonna know nothing about what we do. Yes, I hope you English teachers put a comment in the section below about what I just said. Finally and all, you guys be kind to each other, be nice to each other, love on each other. You guys have a great week and we'll see you next time on Auto Resto Mod. So I wonder if we're gonna have to send this back or can it like hang on the wall? Cause that looks kinda cool. It does look kinda cool. Ooh, what if we polish that up with some sandpaper? I don't know what I'm gonna do with him. It's, this is the guy who's, 66 Mustang is probably languishing in a field somewhere. Close. Patina in. Yeah, yeah, it's getting it's getting some soul. <laughs>